Hey, I show 1120, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Derek Ramsey. I will be the moderator for this session. The session is titled Geekies Unite, Group Awareness and Collaboration in Sakai. This session will be led by Christina from Northwest State, where she wears numerous hats and has for quite some time. Um, I will keep an eye on the chat and get those to Christina as they come in. If I can, if I can fit them in there. Otherwise, if I don't get it right away, don't worry. I will save them and make sure she answers those at the end. Christina. Still muted, Christina. Everyone else hear me. Yes. Okay, thank you. Christina, are you able to hear me? You're still muted. Maybe we lost audio for Christina. Audio should be working. Okay, we hear you now. I've done the introduction. I yep. want to make sure you're ready to get going. All right, once again, users can't hear me correctly. Yes. Okay, thank you. Christina's, sounds like she can talk, but she can't hear. <laughs> Where's Dr. Checked out? Um, Derek says he gave the introduction, but I didn't, we didn't hear anything. Hang on. Uh, Derek says he gave the introduction, but I didn't, we didn't hear anything. Derek, Derek says he gave the introduction, but we didn't hear anything. So I mean. Yes. Yes. And are you talking to the press drum? Can you hear here? It's set up to go through the press drum. Oh, no. Just play a sound. Can you play a sound? We can, can we hear, hear we you can guys. Hear I don't know if you yeah. can hear yeah. us. Yeah. No, no. Oh, go. Uh, See, that's what it is. They can. No, 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 no. no. We can hear them. They can't hear us. Okay. Um, there. Can you hear us now, Josh? Can we hear you now? Someone's test, test one, two, three. Can you hear me, okay. Dr. Chuck? Now we're good, right? Yes. That's what we need. Uh, all righty. I think we are good, Christina. I did give an introduction. Let them know the uh, title of this um, presentation that you'll be leading, and let them know that you wear many hats at Northwest State. We're a couple minutes behind schedule, so I won't hold up any longer. So you are good to go. All right, sorry about that. You guys could hear me, but I couldn't hear anyone but the people in the room. So I'm Christina, getting to do a presentation about groups and collaboration in Sakai. So group work can enhance learning when done well. It can provide more opportunities for students to actively engage with the content, participate in the class. It can expose students to diverse ideas and viewpoints, getting to work with someone who is from a different background or different um, opinion than they are. It can improve students' communication skills. They have to practice being able to get practice in communicating, listening, and being able to share their ideas clearly. And it can also promote responsibility, holding students accountable for their component of the group project. And it can also build relationships. You know, working with someone you wouldn't normally, you know, have a connection with, you can build some great relationships out of that. So in Sakai, what tools are group aware? 
a lot of them. And that's kind of just an insane list. So we're going to step away from the crazy list and ask this one question. What do instructors or facilitators want to do with groups of students? According to the survey of experts, so we're bringing up Family Feud. So those of you online, um, please either unmute and shout it out or type it in the chat and Derek can relay it. Any of you guys here? What do we wanna do with groups? Assignment. En engage students. Assign Chuck yelled assignments first. First, yep. So projects. We want students to complete projects as a group. And that can include a wide range of deliverables. They can write a paper collaboratively. They can do a video of a presentation. They can build an infographic. They can design a game or web app or other activity. They can develop you know, take a test, they can develop content for a future module of class. They're writing, you know, a chapter of a future OER textbook for this subject. So what Sakai tools would we use to have students complete projects as a group? Uh, the, the obvious one is assignments, but actually the other one I had as an option was resources. So in assignments, the advantages are it does have a built-in group submission option. The students will submit one deliverable on behalf of their entire group. It has the option to use rubrics, which is awesome. And it has the option built in to give individual scores for a student overriding the group grade for that. The limitations of using groups of assignments is it does lock the group membership. So once you've got a group assignment, you're not changing who's in that group. It doesn't include individualized feedback for the students, just the individualized score. And that group submission option is something that is just set on creation or from a draft assignment. So once you've got a regular assignment out there, you can't convert it to a draft or to a group assignment, and then you can't convert a group assignment to an individual one. When you're setting up a group assignment, in the settings, you would just select the option after you've got your groups created, of course, to assign it to the selected groups as a group assignment and select the group members that are the groups that should be submitting it. On the list of assignments, it has the little people icon there to indicate that it is a group assignment. When the student submits it, they see that they're representing their group with that submission. So it is not just their individual work that they're submitting on behalf of that entire group. When the instructor goes into grade it, it does not list the individual students, but the groups. But once they go in, it has the same option. I just clicked too fast and now I'm back on the um, classic grader rather than the Sakai grader, but it has the option to put in a score to override the individual grades. That's back to for the group submission. Again, checkbox there in the grader to assign the grade overrides, and that expands this list of all the individual students to be able to give them an individualized score. Resources. Um, Wilma in the last presentation had talked about Dropbox, a way of having a folder that a student can upload files to that only you and that student sees. With resources, it's you can actually use resources to make something similar for a group. You can have a folder in resources that only a single group can see and add files to, and then the instructor is able to view all of the files. Uh, this is an, this can be useful over resources because there's not a, a number limit for the number of files. So if you've got a if they're gonna be working with a large number of files, being able to throw it in resources could be useful. Limitation, resources is not something that is easily gradable. You'd have to create a gradebook item and yeah. compare things separately. It's not an automatic process to make a folder for each group. And of course, resources is subject to the course and institutional uh, file size limits and 
file type restrictions. So if you wanted to set up a group folder in resources, when you're creating the folder, choose the option to display the folder and its contents to a selected group and pick your group. And then once you've got your folder created, go down in the actions menu to where it says edit folder permissions. On the folder permissions, you would actually then give the student role some additional powers to edit um, and create and delete resources. I always say delete their edit, delete their own, so that way they can't go messing up any of the team members' files. And then the students, once you've got them created, they say access to selected groups, and then the students will have just their own team file list, team folder listed, and will have the ability to upload files or create files in there. So that, yes, you could make something similar through. Google Drive shared folder, you could do something like that through you know, other cloud share apps, but this kind of keeps it entirely under the instructor's control. The instructor can view every file in there. So it's kind of a trade off of con control versus you know, letting the students use whatever tool they want. Taking off my Sakai expert hat, putting on the instructional designer hat, if you're having students complete um, projects as a group, number one rule is always set the very clear expectations. What, how is that supposed to work? How, what are the groups expected to do? Consider doing a group contract that the individual members of the group set to define who's responsible for what, what's their timeline and ground rules. Okay, if this group of four disagrees, do we vote? Do we have a tiebreaker? What are the rules for you know, dealing with within our group? And that can help eliminate some of the conflict or at least you know, have the group members decide how they wanna run this and have it set out. Check in with your groups of students regularly and whenever possible have both individual and group deliverables. Even if the individual is nothing more than a reflection on how this went and what part, what part of it was their contribution that can help ensure that everyone is contributing to the project. So back at Family Feud, what do we do with groups? We have one um, from an online user, engaged students. Engaged students? You'd engage students through just about all of it. So afraid I have to say any. Strike, strike. <laughs> I don't have any sort of group polling. That'd be more of like an individual. <laughs> Attendance. We have Babe Even with agency, and we have another one as well for online practice collaboration skills. Okay. Let me do. Um, attendance. Have that more under manage the course and filter. Um, because it's not that you would necessarily take attendance of a group, but to be able to say out of, you know, to be able to break the class down into smaller size chunks, to be able to see out of this group who's here. Okay, now out of this group who's here. And that's not just for attendance, but for a lot of tools in Sakai, just to be able to look at a single group at a time. So what Sakai tools can filter um, by group membership? Just about all of them that lists the entire um, class. In assignments, when you are grading on the list of submissions, you can filter by group membership and see only the members of the selected group. In tests and quizzes, you have the option to filter and see only the submissions for the selected group. For the discussions, when you're looking at the statistics and grading page, that also has the filter by group dropdown. So you can see just the posts and statistics for a particular group. Gradebook has the filter by groups. So you would see just the scores 
for a particular group. Manage participants under site info as the option to filter by group. The roster tool can filter by group. The statistics tool to be able to see the site stats, reports about visits or activity can be filtered by members of a group. And of course, I click too fast again. What you had mentioned attendance, there is the attendance contrib tool from University of Dayton, very awesome tool. And I'm throwing it in here, even though it's a contrib tool because it is so awesome. But the attendance tool can also be filtered by groups. So you can say out of team one, here's the members, mark who is present or who's absent. Here's team two, mark who's present and who's absent. And so that just lets you just easily break down your class to be able to manage things a little easier. We tell students um, when you're working on a big project to break things down into small groups, you know, break things down into small chunks. You can do the same thing with your class. View the information for one group, then view the information for the next group. All right, so Derek, what was the other one from chat? Yeah, we have a, a handful. We'll work our way down, develop team building skills. That, that's a general benefit of group, but not an actual concise activity. Okay. Send group specific communications. Discussion collaboration. Have the students be able to work together in a small group discussion or team. That was number one, so we'll call that close enough. So this one I wanted to, to have a little more of an instructional design side on. Your group discussions can have a whole bunch of options. You can have instructor-led discussions where the instructor sets the prompt and sort of control, still is moderating the discussion and encouraging participation. You can have student-led discussions where within a group, one member is the discussion lead. You can have them do role play. You can have the plan and share group work. You can have something as simple as a think, pair, share activity. So what Sakai tools are useful for this? Discussions and conversations are the best. Discussions, formerly known as forums, the topics can be automatically created for multiple groups. It's a very familiar tool and there are a lot of permission options and combinations. You can get very granular with the permissions. The limitations, you can get very granular with the permissions. And sometimes you are, you are manually creating the topics and setting the permissions for them. So if you're setting up a group discussion, when you're creating topics, there is an option in there if you've got groups created to automatically create multiple topics for groups. So if you select that option and select what groups you want, it will automatically create the title hyphen group name. It'll just do that automatically for all the groups you've got checked. That is the easy option. Doing it that way automatically sets the permissions. So the student role has no permissions, which means students not in that group don't see it. And then whatever group that is has the option to see and post. If you don't um, create the multiple topics for the group, if you just create one topic, then you would have to manually change these permissions to match that for each topic. There are more options. You can change the student role to um, just be the reviewer so they can, other groups can see but not post. You can change the option to have edit ability or not, but that's where you get into the real granular permissions is there under customize. Conversations, the advantages you can have conversations include both discussion topics and questions. That's something new that was introduced in conversations. You can have tags attached to each conversation to identify um, the key topic or question points. And it has a really simple permissions interface. The limitations, 
my button, it's in the wrong spot. The limitations is that it has the simple permissions. It is a relatively new tool, so a lot of people don't have experience using it yet. It does not have the option to create one topic per group, and it doesn't have grading options available yet. That is something that uh, hopefully will be coming in the future. So when you're setting up a new topic or question in conversations, you set up your title, your details, and then further down, just simply change the option from everyone on the site to only members of, this, of the selected group, pick your group, and then when you make it available, when you click on it, it'll give you a message at the top that says this topic is only available to certain groups. So it does give the instructor a visual indicator that this is a group only topic. So when you're doing um, group discussions and collaboration, again, the very clear and detailed explanations is key in any sort of discussion, have a prompt that encourages students to bring in their own experience and viewpoints. Consider assigning roles to the students, you know, within the group, who is the moderator, who's the skeptic, who's gonna be the one ask, who's gonna be the questioner asking, you know, why and how, and who's the reporter who's going to be consolidating the group's opinion and sharing it out with the class. If you're having student-led discussions, let the students lead. Take a little hands-back approach as the instructor and always watch the engagement levels. We did have a, a question come in from uh, Dave. Do you have a recommendation for use of per group topics and linking to those topics in lessons? <laughs> oh, I clicked twice to add in my more points are all screwed up, but differentiate content. This is the answer to Dave's question in here. So instructors can actually use the groups to provide different content to each member of the group or to each group. So group one can have this information, group two can have that information. The Sakai tools that can do that, resources, sign up, assignments, testing quizzes, and lessons. And I put lessons at the bottom just because it's got more to talk about. It is really the best thing in the world. With resources, you can, uh, same sort of limitations and advantages as earlier, but what you can do is instead of setting the permissions to allow the students to add or edit the files, just display a folder and its contents to the selected group. The student, only the students in that group then can see whatever files you put in there. So that's a great way to make this particular set of files visible only to the students. Sign up. The students can, of each group can sign up for a meeting or an event. Wilma had shown that with the oral exams. You can limit that instead of being to the entire class to just a particular group of students. Uh, the limitation is sign up doesn't actually provide any content. It just gives that student, that group of students, the ability to sign up for a meeting or an event where they would hopefully then get whatever content you were going to be providing. And that option is just in the sign up setup. Instead of picking the site, you pick the individual groups. Assignments, you can provide different assignment instructions and options to a particular group. Having it done this way is still one submission per student rather than one submission on behalf of the entire group. So it is not necessarily a collaborative assignment. It's just being able to give a different assignment for a different group. And for setting this up, you would just check the, select the individual or the option for each individual member of the group and then select what groups should be able to see this assignment. This assignment, since it's not for a group submission does not have that little people icon. It just is listed here that it's for the number of selected groups. Tests and quizzes, very much the same thing. You can have different questions and settings for a group of students. 
And this is again, an individual submission, not collaborative. With tests and quizzes, once you have a group quiz, you can't delete that, or a quiz assigned to a group, you can't delete that group. It has issues if the group disappears. You can change the uh, membership of the group, but you just can't delete that group. And it's very much very similar to how you'd set up a group assignment or the assignment released to a specific group under the availability and submissions, select which group met or which groups should be seeing this assignment. And then that is listed as for you know, the number of selected groups rather than for the entire class or entire site. And lessons to get to Dave's point. Lessons can be set to display text, subpages, links, LTI tools, embedded content, uh, links to assignments or tests or discussions, checklists, questions, and student pages just to selected groups. And if you have a assignment or test or discussion that is released only to a specific group, it will automatically set that visibility. The only limitation with us lessons and groups is you can't put a group limit on a top level lessons page. So if it's appearing on the left as a top level page, that is visible to the entire site. Everything within that page can be visible to different groups. And this is really the most awesome way to make things visible to individuals within a group. For any content you're adding to a lessons page, there is all going to be a link that says edit the group for which this should be shown. If you select that option, you get your list of groups, select your groups, and then it displays your text or your link or your embedded media with the team or group name there in brackets so you can see easily as the instructor who this is visible to. And this is that Teams test I had set up for the under testing quizzes. So this was released only to groups one and three. When I just went to lesson, when you go to lessons and just add a link to the test, if that test is released only to specific groups, it will automatically show those groups there on the lessons page. So it will automatically recognize which um, groups that is visible to and display that link only to those groups. So yeah, my best advice for if you're playing with, you know, providing different content to groups, play with lessons, it is the best. We are down to a couple minutes remaining. Okay. What was that? That would probably be under the projects with the assignments because once you have, which will provide feedback here. Um, with the assignments, um, when you do a group submission, you can have the individualized scores, but the feedback is for the entire group and the rubric is for the entire group. So when you've got that set up, you know, you put in the grade for the entire group, you can use the rubric, you can do an override if a student needs it. That override doesn't have a rubric attached, they still see the main group rubric but then any comments and attachments are visible to the entire group. And that is going through both the classic grader and the, new, and the Sakai grader, depending on what uh, you prefer to use. And then if you're providing feedback through gradebook, it's one where there's not a option to provide a comment or points for a specific group, but the best option is then to just use that filter, filter for a specific group, and then go in and add that group's comments 
and you know scores and then view the next group. Discussions has the individualized scores and feedback, but again, very easy to use the filter um, to be able to assign scores based on the group membership and group participation. So when you're grading, view a particular group and then assign that group a score based on their overall group behavior. So is there any other questions in the chat, Derek? Um, we had one more question from Dave that he put out to the group. Has anyone done conditional release with groups and lessons? The conditional release in lessons creates its own set of groups. So it will create a group that's called, you know, access test one. If you've got the prerequisite logic blocking test one, I've not personally tried that with groups, but I know those options should show up. So I would say possible, but I have not tried it myself, so I can't swear to it. Our one minute past time. All right. Being able to man, the last one I didn't talk about was getting to manage the membership, being able, how we would set up the individual groups in Sakai. Okay, all righty, thank you for that. Do we have any other questions for Christina before we depart? Don't see any other questions coming in. Uh, with that, thank you, Christina, for that session. Uh, let's see, our next session begins at noon. So we have about eight minutes um, until the next session begins. And so we will see everyone there.